Star Citizen 7900 XTX, we're here. I've blown all my money. It's taken so much money. This is a crazy graphics card. Whether it's a good upgrade, we'll answer in a minute in the video. But we are here in Star Citizen. And the main question really for me is, is this a 4K 60 FPS upwards graphics card? I've currently got a 3080 and we'll be comparing it to that. Ideally, we obviously would compare it to the 4080. But unless you guys decide to give me loads of money and donations to become members, that's not happening, sorry. There's a limit to the amount of thousand pound graphics cards I can buy, and that limit is one. We've still got some good data because the 3080 is still a good graphics card, and it's interesting to see how much of an improvement the 7900 XTX is. So, let's get into some testing. For testing, we've paired it with 5800X3D, the fastest CPU for Star Citizen right now. We've got 32 gigs of DDR4 3600 CL16 RAM, got an SSD, all that sort of stuff. We're testing on the settings that I always test, basically very high settings apart from the clouds, which are on default medium. But as we get into the testing, the probably the most interesting testing I think is towards the end where we're looking at the clouds and we'll go through all the different cloud settings in Orison because yeah, at the moment a 3080 gets absolutely slammed at 4K with very high clouds and this does quite a lot better. So let's start with Lawville as always. I've done loads and loads of runs. This has taken hours and days of my time. We start with 4K results and you'll see that the 7900 XTX is a good chunk ahead at 4K, actually hitting 60 FPS. And some of this is still CPU bottleneck because we're in a city and the cities, even with a 5800X3D, are still really hard for a CPU. But that is a very, very good result. And it's kind of in line where we'd expect this to be, about 30% faster than the 3080. You'll see at 1440p, we're basically a CPU bottleneck. So we're not learning much here. And it's the same at 1080p, a little bit faster, but effectively the same sorts of results. Moving on to my new Area 18 run, you'll see at 4K, again, actually, this doesn't look that impressive, but it's because we're CPU bottlenecked pretty heavily in Area 18. And so it's faster, but I mean, if you were thinking about the amount it costs, that's not a good upgrade. But hopefully as we get faster CPUs and as the game gets optimized more and more by CIG, that sort of result will improve. And it's the same at 1440p CPU bottlenecked and 1080p the same. So nothing particularly interesting there. Quantum travel at 4K is really, really brutal on the graphics card. And you'll see here, we've seen a good increase again from the 3080, but under 60 FPS. But hopefully our CIG rework quantum travel, we'll see this sort of result uh, improve and hopefully we'll be well, there's no real reason for this to be a graphically intense scene. It's just that I think the effect that CRG made all those years ago just happens to be really intense. And uh, yeah, we're waiting for an optimization basically on this one. In space with nothing going on, effectively the CPU is allowed to run free and we get some high, high frames. But what's going on at 4K? We see that the 3080 is GPU bottlenecked, but actually still the 7900 XTX is still being CPU bottlenecked. So you see the amount of power these this card has got. It, it is really, really quick. Now, moving on to Horizon and some really intensive clouds. First up, we're starting with just the default settings that I've got. So it's very high for everything, but the clouds are on medium. But at 4K, even the 3080 is being bottlenecked. So even last gen's kind of higher end cards can't cope with 4K. But in this scene, you'll see that the 7900 XTX is still CPU bound. That, that isn't the full potential. In order to see the full potential of this card with the clouds, you have to start upping the quality. So first of all, let's just show you the 3080 results. You'll see here that as you step the clouds up, the frame rate drops. And at very high clouds, which is the best looking cloud settings by a long way, at 4K, the 3080 crumbles. It falls to its knees. 16 FPS is obviously not playable, even for Star Citizen, where sometimes you might accept between 20, 25, 30 for a minimum spec system. The 3080 is absolutely slammed by the very high clouds. But when you move across to the 7900 XTX, you'll see a completely different situation. High clouds are still CPU bottlenecks, so you'll see it's trading blows with the medium clouds, effectively the same result. And the very high clouds result is basically double the 3080, a huge increase in performance. So that's probably the best result in terms of uplift. But uh, you can see that it is a really, really powerful graphics card, as you kind of expect for the amount of money. I've got lots of thoughts about this graphics card. Let's start off with 
is it a 4K 60 FPS car? It it basically is. In most areas, most reasonable areas of the game, apart from quantum travel, it is a 4K graphics card. And for this card and the 4080, I think they're the part, the kind of the minimum that I would say you've got a 4K Star Citizen graphics card. Obviously, in the future, we're hoping for optimizations. We're hoping that the the brutalness of the game will be kind of optimized out of it and we'll be able to play it 4k on maybe like a 3080 but at the moment you can't i i've had the 3080 since a little bit after launch and i don't play it 4k now i've got a 4k monitor i don't play it 4k because it it just can't quite get to pleasant frames i, I think 60 fps or around that mark is is nice and it's often more around the 30 35 40 in just general star citizen gameplay whereas the 7900 xgx I'm comfortably playing in 4K and not noticing uh, frame drops that feel like they're too slow, if that makes any sense. So it, I think this, and I'm sure the 4080 and, and actually probably the 7900 XT, they are probably the first, as well as the 4090, they are 4K Star Citizen graphics cards. So if that is in, you're in the market for that, then they're the ones to go for. The questions then are, are probably more around if you're not playing at 4K, I wouldn't worry with this at all. The 3080 doesn't get bottlenecked, I think, at all, apart from maybe quantum travel, at uh, 1440p. So if you're playing at 1440p and you're thinking, oh, maybe I'll upgrade to these, in Star Citizen, I wouldn't bother because at 1440p, you just won't see the benefit. You'll be CPU bound more often than not with one of the kind of higher end CPUs. And so I just wouldn't go there if you're not playing at 4K. They're, they're basically exclusively worth getting if you're playing at 4k other questions around upgrades it isn't a massive 30 percent sounds like a lot i guess from the 3080 for me but if i didn't have a star citizen youtube channel that was about technology and frame rates and what's the parts that you should buy for star citizen i wouldn't i wouldn't have bought this let's just put it plainly i only bought this for you so that you can see how it performs because I don't think, although it has allowed me to go from 1440p to 4K, it's so much money that um, for me, I would actually say it, it wasn't, it's not a worthwhile upgrade. But depending on what you've already got in your system, maybe you could justify it. But again, I think only if you're trying to game at 4K. In Starsys, obviously, we're not really covering here other games. And so when it, talk, when it comes to talking about other games, there's loads of other considerations to uh, fill in, obviously. The ray tracing on these cars won't be as good as the Nvidia ones and um, just in general requirements of 4K gaming they vary obviously and, and depending what you're playing as your other games as well as Star Citizen you might not need a card like this anyway. I, I don't like recommending people just go out and buy really high-end cards just for the sake of it. You've got to really see the benefit and and again only really at 4K. At 40-40p these are way too much and overkill. I'll do some more testing with this uh, in the next few weeks after Christmas probably. I'm going to try and do some under vaulting, try and get it, it does run pretty hot actually, but uh, that's to be expected for a 350 watt graphics card. Um, but yeah, some under vaulting, probably do some overclocking as well. Uh, and in general, I will start to transition this into my system and my testing just so that we can see really, it, it allows, having a really high end graphics card allows basically to allows you to just see exactly how the cpus uh, perform and really for star citizen as we've been saying forever they are the most important part and so as we go into the new 7700x that i've got lying around and then into the x3d parts from amd with the extra cash and all that sort of stuff it will be handy to have this card in the system and do the testing or at least that's how i'm justifying this purchase for myself um but yeah if you like this sort of stuff, you should subscribe. You should become a member if you want to support the channel with money or just donate money if you feel sorry for me, which maybe you should. Um, and also do join the Discord. Loads of amazing people on the Discord who will talk and help through any Star Citizen PC part discussions that you need to do. But that's enough for this one. We'll see you soon. Bye.